When I began my career as a neuroscientist at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York City, I spent most of my time in the lab doing experiments on microscopic brain cells. For a while, I thought I was all that <laughs> a productive neuroscientist with my own lab, and lots of students who seemed to look up to me. But one day. Leon Tolton, an African American student from the Bronx, asked me a question that was challenging. He asked, "Why don't you research asthma in my community?" I found this question challenging because I was already a busy laboratory scientist. I was only interested in what I could study with my microscope. I could not imagine what I could do about asthma in actual people, <laughs> but Leon insisted. He kept telling me that there were many children in minority communities that were suffering from asthma. So I said, "Okay, <laughs> let's do something about this." <laughs> and we got a hold of a database of hospital reports. And calculated asthma hospitalization rates for every zip code in New York City. The results looked like this. Wait for it. There. <laughs> At first glance, not very exciting. <laughs> it was when we put these numbers onto New York City maps. That's when we realized we had something important. We discovered that the map for asthma hospitalization rates matched the map for low incomes, which matched the map for minority populations. Our study showed that asthma hospitalization rates were 21 times higher in low-income communities than they were. In wealthier neighborhoods in New York City, 21 times higher. This study had a huge impact. In 1999, 2001, and 2003, the New York Times published a series of articles about these asthma disparities, calling our work the first study of its kind. For years, we presented. Our maps wherever we could, at church basements, daycare centers, community councils, even dance clubs. <laughs> we went to the Bronx, to the Brooklyn, to Harlem, wherever there were people affected by this asthma epidemic. We were there with our maps. <laughs> with our maps in hand, community leaders demanded and received. More health services. Their activism prompted the New York City Department of Health to open neighborhood health centers in communities with the highest asthma rates. You might ask, why am I telling you the story of a research project that we did a while ago? I want you to know that this study. Changed the way we do research with communities. For many years since then, my students and I have continued working on environmental health research, diseases like these, including asthma. So far, we have published 25 scientific studies on asthma, including an intervention. In a school where one in four children had this disease, when we went into a school, we didn't just ask the children, "Raise your hand if you have asthma." We asked the children to be scientist helpers and got them involved in our experiments. Children love experiments. You've never seen so many nine-year-olds excited. To learn about lung function, <laughs> people in our studies 
are not just passive study subjects. Instead, they are active participants in the process of discovery. This inclusive approach to science is now a thing. <laughs> It is called community-based participatory research. Recently, we used the same approach in a study of environmental exposures in Latina and African American girls. I presented the study results to the girls and asked for their feedback. I was very glad to see that the girls understood the results of the environmental exposure assessment. But I shouldn't have been surprised that preteen girls had a lot to say about my high heel shoes and my curly hair. <laughs> But these things were important to them. The fact that the person presenting the study results to them was someone like me, a female Puerto Rican scientist who occasionally wears nice shoes, <laughs> changed the girl's idea of who could be a scientist and what a scientist can do for their community. In me, they had actually seen themselves. Who knows? Maybe one of these girls one day will grow up to have her own lab and her own assertive student who will insist in asking her, why don't you research this disease in my community? Thank you. Thank you.